So there's a lot of champions in Paladins. Some are just way better than the others and some are they're not doing that good. So in this video I will give you guys the 10 worst champions in Paladins in season 7 at least. I also tried to put at least 2 champions in each role so I tried to make it fair. Number 10 in the list is gonna be Genos. He did get buffed recently and I see a lot of people still kind of complaining about it. They're still saying it's not good, it's not enough and he's still not really enough to solo support is what I I heard at least personally i tried it and I, I feel like i did pretty good but i can definitely say there's way better supports out there there's like furia there's moldamba there's ying like you know he's just getting outclassed by everyone else now i would say though genos can be very viable if you have two supports i feel like that's the only way you can make him work besides that if you want to go solo genos i don't think it's that viable to be fair in the higher elo sometimes they go double support so i guess you can kind of make him work then but maybe in the lower elo he's a lot better but there's just way better supports out there number nine in the list is gonna be caspian he actually used to be one of the best flanks out there but then he just got hard nerfed he's just not doing very good anymore he's very squishy there's some cases where you can actually make him very viable and you can like pop off with him i feel like if you're a really good caspian player you can definitely still make him work but against pro players and like in higher elo he gets countered really easily he deals a lot of damage but he's very squishy you can easily just kill him and compared to other other flankers he's also just getting outclassed his escape is not very good most of the time you kind of use it as to engage and stuff as soon as you see him coming against pro players you can just kill him so quick you can definitely make him work in the lower elo because i feel like people there they're not even looking behind them or something but against pro players good luck with that because as soon as they hear you dashing around and stuff caspian is just dead so quick number eight in the list is gonna be Ceres. now Ceres can actually be very good if if you're in lower elo if you're below gold maybe even platinum you can kind of make service work there because the enemies are still not that good at least but in the higher elo you don't see Ceres. all can Ceres do is basically heal her allies in the early game she can be viable i guess she can be good but in terms of like in the mid game to late game she's kind of falling off compare Ceres to like maldamba for example maldamba is just superior damba can heal as much as Ceres and Daba has more utility. Again, these champions can be good, but they're just getting outclassed by other champions. Number seven in the list is gonna be Betty. Again, Betty is one of those characters where they're kinda good in the lower elo, but the higher elo you go, they're just falling off. There's just way better AoE damages out there. I would even say Dredge is way better than Betty, but obviously the most superior ones are like Bomb King and Willow. Bomb King and Willow are just way better currently. Willow can literally do a lot of damage and also doing anti-healing. BK can do a lot of damage and also stun people and Barry is just damage you know it's just damage and against pro players betty kind of gets countered as well as soon as they see like the little firework ability they can just run away so she's easy to counter and again getting outclassed by everyone else number six in the list is gonna be yagaros now this might be very controversial because yagaros can actually be really really good if you're a yagaros player that's the only way you can make yagaros work if you're a yagaros player if you don't play yagaros you're just gonna throw the Game. like you're not gonna do anything so for those yagaroth specialists out there yes yagaroth can definitely still work especially with good teammates because yagaroth can definitely be viable in the higher elo if you know what you're doing but the thing is not a lot of people know how to play yagaroth that's why her win rate is not very good that's why she's not getting played a lot it's just because most people don't know what they're doing with yagaroth and that's kind of you know that's kind of me i don't know what i'm doing with yagaroth but again if you're a yagaroth specialist don't worry because your champion is actually really good Number Number 5 in the list is gonna be Kazumi. I mean, you guys are probably expecting this. Obviously, Kazumi is gonna be here because Kazumi is just one of the worst of flankers right now. There's just no reason for you to pick Kazumi. There's just way better flankers out there. And, and in my opinion, she's not even really a flanker because she doesn't really play like behind and playing aggressively and stuff. I, I mean, you could, but most of the time you kind of like wait for your teammates to come to you instead for your traps, you know? And in my opinion, that doesn't really work in the higher elo, maybe in the lower 
lower elo which can work but higher elo it doesn't work very well her ult is very annoying for sure i feel like every time you ult someone it's basically a guaranteed kill but that's basically what's happening to her and that's the only thing that is actually good so if you're trying to climb up i don't think kazumi is a very good champion to climb up with number four in the list is gonna be ray now don't get me wrong in some situations ray can actually be very good but that's the problem with ray she's only good in some maps if you're not in those maps ray is not gonna be very good that's the only reason why she's here in those maps for example um what, what do you call it? i'll just put it in the screen like this map for example ray is just so good in this map but in other maps she doesn't work very well and that's why she's here in the list because she's just very situational oh and i also forgot to mention ray is also really good double support she's not very good at solo supporting if you do want to play her in any map you would probably want another support with ray i feel like that's the only way you can make ray work in any map possible if you have two supports number three in the list is gonna be strix strix did get a buff uh, recently but uh, can i say just way better compared to strix i'll be honest though snipers nowadays they're actually not doing very good in some maps snipers can be good but the thing is in those maps you most likely will play kinesa against pro players Shrix can easily get countered because you basically everyone has free illuminate at this point so they can just see you in this with kinesa you can do a quick scope you can teleport your ult is also really really good with kinesa kinesa is just overall way better than Shrix. i feel like Shrix kind of need like a rework or something because there's only two snipers in the game and Shrix is just falling off number two in the list is gonna be torvald now torvald can actually be really really good in some cases if you're in the higher elo and you have a duo having like a flanker and a torvald can be very very annoying but that's the problem with torvald if you don't have a team that coordinates with you no one is like following you around you're not gonna be doing very good torvald is the type of champion that needs a flanker with them or something they need a they need a duo because he recently got nerfed with his damage so he's already not doing enough damage she cannot shield anyone if you're playing solo you can only shield yourself and you can silence as well but wh why would you silence if you're the only one there like it won't work very well compared to like Khan, for example. Khan can solo out flank if you want to. Torvald, you need a duo because if you can't, you kind of play like a point tank and obviously that's not very good. And of course, number one is Seven. Seven currently is just not very, very good. He's getting outshined by everyone else. He actually used to be one of the best, if not the best flanker, but um, he just got nerfed way too much. There's just no use for him anymore. I mean, I guess if you're a really good Seven, if you're a Seven specialist, you can still make it work but he's kind of the same like Yagaroth I guess where if you're not a specialist with this champion you're not gonna do anything but I feel like even if you're a specialist with seven I, it's not worth it it's really not worth it there's just way better flankers out there currently so guys do you guys agree with my list over here comment down below if you guys agree with me or not so but of course keep in mind that this is only my opinion but do not take it personally anyway well that's it for today guys if you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time see everybody